Hi, hello, welcome back to the same corner of my room that I usually film in because it's the most open area with like mostly the best lighting. But anyway, today I thought about maybe filming or starting to film a crochet with me sort of um, video because I've not done like a full length one before. The idea of it is a little bit daunting because I'm not used to like documenting my entire like process so this could be interesting i know some people have been asking me about like how i design my stuff because i write a lot of patterns so hopefully this is informative and if it's not then hopefully it's at least uh, <laughs> enjoyable to watch but anyway the yarn that i'll be using for this project is actually gifted to me by this aggregate website called timu so one of the vendors i found um their brand is called lotus yarns and I chose this yarn, which is like a really nice um, cashmere and wool blend. And it's super soft and like really fluffy. And I got this beige color because um, it reminds me of my um, dog. Like her fur is kind of like this. And beige is also one of my favorite colors. So, And the weight of this yarn is pretty thin. I think it's a lace weight. So it's like this then, so I'll probably double pull from like one cake once I cake this up so that it won't take me too long to make what I have in mind. They also sent me a few other things and included in that is this pack of hooks. And then they also sent me this cute little organizer thing and it's actually separate so you can like slide it off and then like slide it back in like this. And they're pretty cute because they look like I think little like bears and um, what also came were these stitch markers and then they sent a tape measure so the kind of idea that I had in my mind um, is of a cottage core type of top so I don't know if y'all have seen like this particular kind of top but it's like this coquettish like milkmaid style top and usually it'll have like ruffles everywhere or like frills like along the collar along the sleeves and then like a button front and like maybe a ruched center or something like that with frills um on the bottom or the hem of the top and that type of that style of top has been living like rent free in my head for so long and i've always wanted one so yeah before i actually start on any project what i like to do is i like to gather a bunch of like inspiration so usually i'll go on like pinterest or i'll just like draw out um something that i've had in my mind that's been like living in my brain for a really long time or um what usually happens that is i actually draw a lot of inspo from like characters um like um video game characters or like vtubers and stuff um, but this time what I'm going to be doing is since I've seen so many of these types of milkmaid style tops like on circling through the internet is I'm probably just gonna go through my Pinterest and and then what I'll do is I'll either draw just like one um, Sort of like idea that I have in my mind using procreate um, Or I'll draw like a couple of them or maybe even like two it doesn't really matter how many I just like draw a few that I have in my brain and then I just choose the one that I like the most to create in birth basically <laughs> out of yarn i don't know if that sounded weird but yeah that's that's basically the process so without any further ado so that i don't stretch out this intro extremely long and bore y'all let's just get into it so something that i have to do that i don't really like doing because i think it's quite boring in my opinion when you have a hank like this and you're not insane or magical or whatever you gotta wind this thing into like cakes i'm gonna have to take this thing my swift then this thing my yarn roller thingy and i'm gonna have to uh wind up some hanks which might take me a while but you know you know like when i whenever i look at this thing it reminds me of like a Chinese umbrella because it kind of opens up like an umbrella too, like this. Anyway, we're gonna wind up these things into cakes.
some yarn into yarn cakes. After I wound up my yarn, I actually did a mini gauge swatch, which is something that I always do before I even start like crocheting the actual project. I just wanted to show you all real quick what kind of stitches I'm planning on using for this milkmaid top. So if you can see like this one on the bottom is just your normal double crochet. I quite like using this stitch especially with thinner yarns because it works up quite fast and it has like a really nice just like flat texture kind of like in knitting when you use stockinette. And then this center textured stitch is called the lemon peel stitch and it's basically when you alternate between single crochet and double crochets and it's one of my favorite textured stitches so I'll probably be using this part um, for probably the bust because I don't want the bust to be like see-through at all. And then this top part is just like a little scalloped sort of like stitch thingy um, that I kind of like made up on a whim. I also did some math which probably doesn't make any sense to you, but it's basically based off of my um, personal measurements and like how I want things to fit. But yeah, this is what, for example, this is what it looks like. Yeah, there's like a lot of math when it comes to like making stuff and you want to like make sure that it fits. So personally, what I like doing is just spending like a little bit of time doing that, even though I suck at math. But anyway, now that we have everything settled, the gauge swatch, some measurements, some all of that stuff, I'm actually going to start working on the actual top. So I just kind of like fast forwarded and started the beginning off camera, but I basically already did a few rows. Um, and I'm starting off with the lemon peel stitch because I want the bust area of the milkmaid top again to like be like not super see-through so um, now that I'm actually sitting here and like literally just filming myself like crocheting it's kind of funny because like back when I first started making reels on Instagram um, which was which is the platform that I use the most I noticed that a lot of like fiber artists who upload like super simple videos like this like to literally of just them like crocheting and knitting or like making a slip knot or like casting on some yarn like i noticed that a lot of those videos that i came across and i don't know if it's like because they're popular that i came across them but the thing is like i also follow a lot of fiber artists so i just see their posts like when they post it and then i see like how it does like in a span of time like i've noticed that those videos in particular like do so freaking well like it's so funny because like sometimes like some people will spend a lot of effort making like a video and then like they'll post it <laughs> and then it like gains like zero attention at all and i honestly quite frankly feel bad um but then like sometimes people will post like those types of really i would say they're quite relaxing to watch actually like those types of videos that don't take as much effort and like the instagram algorithm loves it so freaking much like that's their food like when they want people to cook they want people to freaking crochet and knit on camera that's the kind of food that they want <laughs> but yeah any enough of my like rambling about like how mysterious and weird the algorithm is on instagram i'm just going to work this well, I said that word really weirdly. Work, work, this, um... Hey. <laughs> so... I just wanted to update you all about my progress from yesterday. So I ended up not getting much done because I did some other things but I also did work on this for like um quite a few hours I think like maybe like five and I got this much done and it doesn't look like much but if you look really closely there are like thousands of stitches so but I'm almost done with the bottom part before I have to split for the front and back panels but yeah I'm just gonna finish that then start on the sleeves and hopefully get as much done as possible so I can start on the actual like body part.
And then I crocheted for quite some time, probably like a few hours or so before I stopped to feed Pickle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to eat food? Okay, I give you food. Yeah, and then I realized that the amount of increases that I was making were like too much, like way too much. So I ended up having to like frog everything, which is pretty sad, but you know, it's it's a part of the process and like pretty much unavoidable whenever I make something new, unfortunately. Hi, hello. I thought I would like film like a mini segment in this video um, showing y'all like what I got. So if you're interested, you can stay. If you're not, you can always skip this mini segment. I'll have like timestamps and stuff. So yeah, without further ado, here's everything Ella spent her adult money on at MomoCon. So actually, um, I didn't pay for any of these. They're just like business cards, but I'm like a super big fan of like collecting business cards. So like a lot of the shops that I like bought stuff from or like places where I just like browsed and like wanted their social so I could like follow them later. Like I got, I got so many and like a lot of the cards are like so cute. Like this one with like this bunny and like a chick. This one is so cute and there's like a few other ones like this art is like really pretty so yeah i'm just like a huge fan of these i always like put them on my wall like um i have like a bunch of them just like in between like a bunch of the other prints that i have um on my walls so yeah there's that i bought a heck ton of prints like i bought a bunch of these mini ones because i really like decorating my walls with them and a lot of them are obviously like genshin related because i'm like super obsessed with genshin but yeah I got these two, they're super pretty, um, Ayayo and Zong Lee. Finally, a pretty razor print from the same artist as the razor one is this Ito print. And then, from Rainy Brew, these two, a Goro, oh whoopsies, it's supposed to be horizontal, a Goro and it's like super pretty because it has like foil, gold foil. And then this Kazuha and Venti, so cute. I got this little square print from Siwa Lock. I got three. I got this Ayato, Goro, and Akaya for my sister. And then I got a few large prints. So I got a Hualien poster. I got this Ito for my sister. This Albedo this Toma and then from a different artist I, I got this Albedo super beautiful and this Kazuha and then I got some uh, just a few stickers like not a lot and then some like keychains and pins so I got this little cat Kaya for my sister I got this Venti for myself from Hideaway Melon, so cute. This Bash Puppy sticker, he's so adorable. And then for my little sister, this child pin, super cute. And this child like keychain. And the keychain is so adorable because he's like holding the fish in his mouth, like um with the emoji that's like super popular. And his mask is like smiling. And then I got three pins from Hideaway Melon. These were actually B grade, and I literally couldn't tell why they were B grade. Like, Ayato looks perfect. I guess maybe there might be some scratches that I can't see, but I got an Ayayo for my sister. I got a Goro. And then a Venti. And the last two things that I got, it's the same thing, but basically I got two of these keychains, one for myself and one for my sister. It's Fox Tung and um, Shelian as like one of those minks. But yeah, that's everything that I got. I'm planning on finishing up the bust area today and then hopefully um finishing up the sleeves as well basically i just resumed where i left off on and that was the back panel of the bust so i just quickly finished that and by quickly i meant like i spent like one hour doing that and then i just made sure that everything fit properly and that it looked okay before i started working on the sleeves Now that I'm just 
working on these sleeves that are also taking me forever because I am so slow at crocheting. I thought I would talk a little bit about my experience at MomoCon. Just getting into like the first thing that happened, I super like Vash from Trigon and I saw a super good Vash cosplay while I was walking around in the artist alley and I was like stopping to look at like a vendor's like work because I thought it was like super pretty and I just wanted to like shop around and like see if I wanted to get anything from them and Vash also like stopped like kind of like right next to me like at the same like vendor's place and the thing with like me is if I'm like a if I'm like standing next to somebody who I really like and this includes like characters so I guess like cosplayers who are cosplaying as like the character it like really trips me up like so much like I'm kind of like OMG kind of like I guess if you were to stand next to like a celebrity that you like I don't really know but like that's kind of like the feeling that was going through my mind I was like holy crap I really like, really wanted to ask him if I could like take a picture with him because I saw that um there were a few other people who did ask and he said like yeah sure go ahead so I was like omg like should I ask because the cosplay was like amazing and like he seemed like a really nice person but like literally the entire time I couldn't even like look at him and then he left so obviously I couldn't like ask him if I could take a picture um, the second sort of thing that happened was um, I noticed that at one of the vendor stalls they were having like a stamp rally which is like this thing where you collect a bunch of like stamps from other people who are participating and then at the very end when you collect like all of them you get like a little like prize of some sort and in this case there, it was like a sticker sheet with all the artists like work on it like one of the stickers on the sticker sheet was a Shuka sticker and it was so Oh, cute and I really wanted it and like in general I don't usually do these types of like stamp rally thingies especially since I was like already tired because I already walked like I think like three hours like around the entire place and was like in general like really socially like drained because I did talk to a lot of like artists and vendors already and I already like bought stuff so mm, my social battery is like does not have a very long battery life kind of like old apple phones so i like went ahead and i asked the vendor if i could like participate but i didn't know that there were conditions because i'm not really used to like doing this sort of thing this particular vendor the one who was actually like hang handing out the cards for the sticker alley you had to bark and meow and like the issue wasn't like me like not wanting to do it because i'm embarrassed like i've heard people do it all the time i watch streamers and vtubers do it the thing that kind of tripped me up was the fact that number one i wasn't expecting that there would be a condition and number two like i just like brain farted like i was like wait what like what like like what <laughs> you know like kind of like that feeling and i was just standing there like in my brain like i was basically just like what does a dog and a, and a cat sound like like how do i make that noise like all of my like brain cells were kind of like fizzling out because of the amount of like interactions i already had with like other people and it like takes effort for me to interact with so many new people all at once in one day within like a few hours so like literally my brain was freaking fried and i couldn't think and like i felt bad because they were like i think they thought that i was like embarrassed or something um so they were like they were like oh we're not gonna like look at you we're not gonna like listen to you and they kind of just like turned away and then in the end like they were like oh you can just like do one so i was like okay i'll like just meow i guess and they were like okay we'll do it with you so like we meowed together and then they gave me the stamp and like the little card and i just felt so bad because the vendors were both super nice and I didn't want them I don't know if they felt bad but yeah needless to say I didn't participate with the, in the rest of the stamp rally because I was just honestly too tired yeah that's what happened and then I ended up having to basically frog the entire sleeve that I made because it didn't fit correctly but that night I was at least able to finish one sleeve 
and then the next day i basically just finished the other sleeve and i tried on everything just to make sure that it fit correctly and it was looking fine until i started working on the actual torso area of the top and i realized that number one i had made the top bust part a bit too long for my liking and then the sleeves obviously still didn't fit exactly how i wanted them to fit but the biggest error i guess was the fact that the top fit way too small and i ended up having to go back to the drawing board and basically sketch out a new design which included the split hem on the bottom to accommodate for my hips and then the wider front part where the buttons are plus a fold over top The next day, I finished off the torso as well as the rest of the base, and then I started sewing in my buttons, finished that. Alright, so I just finished sewing on my buttons, and I accidentally sewed on like an extra one, so you can just see one like hanging off here, but I'm just gonna get rid of that. And as you can see, it actually fits a lot better after I added on like this wide like front part. I might add like a ribbon or something on the back here. But yeah, this is what it looks like. I think the fold over is quite cute. I'm just gonna do all the finishings. I'm gonna add that bow to the back so the sleeves don't keep like falling off. And we'll basically be done. And after all of that frogging and all of that pain that I don't know if you could feel from the screen, which you probably couldn't because I just basically didn't talk when that happened, I finally finished. the end where i talk about this experience and talk about what i liked and what i don't like about this project and how it went so if you've been like watching along the entire way you probably already know that i frogged like 15 million times and that the design really detoured from like the original because of all the issues that i had with it not fitting despite me taking a gauge swatch and measuring the gauge swatch and casting on the correct number of stitches i guess like i did something wrong or my calculations are wrong or like maybe i don't know because this yarn is like really stretchy like wool and i'm used to like working with um, cotton maybe i like stretched out my foundation chain too much i don't know but basically despite all the detours and the second design and like all the frogging that i did i still feel like this top ended up turning out to be quite cute like i really like this fold over right here and um i like the split on the very bottom which flares out but yeah anyways i hope you all enjoyed watching this video or you got something out of it whether it is um some insight into how i design things or something else <laughs> or maybe like realizing that a lot of the times like my projects actually do not work out um the way that i originally want them to be so yeah that is reality and i don't usually share that but yes usually i have to frog multiple times or make multiple samples before i make a pattern but yeah um if you watched all the way until here thank you so much for sticking around and even if you did watch a tiny part of this video and like basically just skipped to the very end for the reveal i also thank you for that as well anyway i'll see you next time so bye bye for now